The meeting of the Public Safety Committee is now called to order. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd? Present. Alderman Vaccaro? Present. Alderman Cohn? Present. Alderman Arnowitz? Present. Alderwoman Hubbard? Present. Alderman Coder? Here. Alderwoman Spencer? Here. Alderman Muhammad? Alderwoman Boyd? Here. Chair Chairman Kennedy? Here. President Reed? You have nine members pr present, Mr. Chairman. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we are here today to hear board bills 53, 54, 55, 56, and 57. Uh, we had a meeting on these two weeks ago. Uh, today is the portion where we'll have uh, public testimony. Uh, first, before we begin that, are there any questions that any members of the committee uh, would have related to these board bills of the building commissioner or any of his staff before we take public testimony. We did send out the uh, summaries that uh, the building commissioner put together for us. So if there's no questions, we can go directly to the um, public testimony. We would, we would like to thank all of those who are here today, both to listen and to testify before the committee. Uh, your words do have meaning to us. Uh, your thoughts and ideas are significant. And we appreciate your taking time out of your schedule to come before the committee and to share us your thoughts. Uh, there may be a diversity of thoughts, so someone may come after you with something completely different than what you have said. We ask that we each just be both kind, polite, and respectful of each other's opinions. Uh, the committee, typically we don't allow clapping or cheering when someone has said something that we uh, agree with, but you are very open. You can smile as much as you want but please do not disturb the meeting in the process. If you have a phone or something that needs to be turned down or off, please do so also. Um, there are a number of people that have signed up for the various bills. What we'd like to do is to call, if a person has signed up for one bill, uh, for several bills, I mean, what we will do is to call you up one time, and then you can speak on each of the bills that you have signed up for, as opposed to bringing you up, sitting you down, and bringing you back up again so we don't have to do the uh, jumping bean uh, imitation here today. Just when you change your thoughts and are going to the next bill, just say that you're also speaking on, bo on board bill 54, whatever that number is, so that we can follow it and make sure that when we go back through the tapes, we'll know which portion you were speaking, you were speaking on. Um, our initial thought was to just have these bills this week or today and then another meeting this Thursday, but the Thursday calendar is full with about five committee meetings. So then we will be pushing these, the meeting to make amendments and changes on the bill to next Tuesday, but I want the committee members to know we may have two meetings next week so that we can complete all these bills on the building code. Um, because of the number of people that we have, the rules say that a person can have up to five minutes, and so we will take it up to about that time for each individual. I will be timing you, and we'll try to give you a notion of when you're reaching your time. Um, but please pay attention. If I give you the signal that your time is up, please stop so we don't have to talk over you. There are a number of others who are to speak after you, and we want to be respectful of everybody's time, positions, and ideas. Uh, these sheets do not require you to print. So most of us have signed, uh, have done script, and I'm going to do my best to read it. So the intent is not to mispronounce anybody's name, but just please uh, stay with us. When you come forward, please state your name and your address for the record. That is also required by the board rules that you state both your name, you can say the organization that you're representing, and your address, and then go with your comments. We are happy to accept any written comments. If you don't have them now, you can send them after you've made your presentation or get them to us this week just as soon as possible. Okay. With that, we'll begin with um, those who signed up for Board Bill 53. The rules say you take the pros and the cons, starting with the pros and then those people who are against it. No one has signed up against it, so we'll go with the pros on Board Bill 53. I believe it's Mickey. I, is it Coyle? Coyle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Which one is this? 
I am Mickey Croyle, um, Chair of the LWB Metro St. Louis Environmental Quality Committee. My um, whose address is 8706 Manchester Road, Suite 104, St. Louis, Missouri. My home address is 616 County Hills Drive, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm actually addressing all of the bills, um, so. That's fine. St. Louis can adopt the most up-to-date efficiency building codes for new residential buildings. The 2018 International Energy Conservation Code, IECC, will greatly benefit St. Louis City and its residents by improving the comfort, air quality, efficiency, and performance of newly constructed buildings. A future homeowner could expect to reduce energy use by 27% and save about $580 per year on energy bills with the unamended efficiency standards. The energy efficiency and health benefits associated with adopting the 2018 code are especially critical in improving the lives of the at-risk, low-income households, which include an increasingly large share of elderly <coughs> adults operating on fixed incomes and tight budgets. The League of Women Voters has been at the forefront of environmental protection movements for decades, consistently supporting legislation to preserve our nation's natural resources and protect our public health. We have advocated for legislation to improve energy efficiency throughout the, through the economy and improve um, pollution control. The League of Women Voters of Metro St. Louis using the League policy to promote an environment beneficial to the life through the protection and wise management of natural resources in the public interest strongly supports the adoption of the IECC 2018 codes without amendments. St. Louis needs to protect energy efficiency in our community. When communities invest in energy efficiency, benefits include the creation of local jobs, reducing energy costs for families, and reducing health costs from respiratory diseases such as asthma and allergies. The Public Safety Committee should support the energy codes without amendments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have written? We have written questions. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Richard Riley. Do I have that correct? Yes. On board bill 53. Uh, you also you signed up for several others, didn't you? Did you also sign up for any other bills? Yes, yes. So okay. I'll be speaking as a, a pro voice for adapting all the energy efficiency measures being considered today. Okay. My name is Richard Riley. I live at 3949 Juniana Street in the great neighborhood of Tower Grove South. Um, I want to testify as a pro voice for adapting all the 2018 codes without amendment. And I do this with over 35 years experience in the home building business under my belt, including over 10 years as a volunteer and board member with Habitat for Humanity here in St. Louis, where we have built uh, hundreds plus of LEED Platinum homes, and I've seen the value of energy efficiency on the environmental health and on the budgets of those with the lowest incomes in this town. And when somebody moves from a, a, an apartment that's not quite adequate with $100 a month air conditioning bills into a Habitat home and has $29 a month bills because it's so energy efficient, plus a healthier indoor environment, all these things are built into this code, then you're looking at, at folks getting a raise just about, right? right? So there's a great, great value in this. And it is not just the first time costs of building a house, an apartment, or a structure that have to be considered when we think about the end users of the things we provide permits for in the city of St. Louis. It is the operating cost. It's the cost to live in. It is no boon to get a, a deal on your monthly rent or your mortgage payment if your utility bills are going to be significantly high. And so I think considering city goals uh, in other aspects of energy efficiency in the commercial sector with the benchmarking project, et cetera, 
um, that this is very complementary to that process and has great value for the end user of the built environment in the city, the citizens of the city, the people who live here 24 seven. And um, so with that in mind, I, I want to give a ringing endorsement to adopting those things without amendment. Uh, I think that um, the notion that the first time costs are, are, are significantly higher um, tends to be exaggerated. I know this from my own estimating projects and the work that I've done. Um, and aside from this experience in the construction industry, I am also a, a lead AP, which is a leadership in energy and environmental design accredited professional, a home energy score assessor, a building performance institute energy auditor with building analyst and envelope professional and healthy homes evaluator certification. So I passed a lot of tests in studying all this stuff. And I can um, tell you with, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart through the deepest portions of my intellect from having studied all this stuff, that adapting these codes is what is best for the citizens of St. Louis. And um, as someone who is also a member of the HBA's Advanced Building Science and Technology Steering Committee, um, I would just share that, that not everybody associated with the HBA has the same feelings that you'll, you'll hear today. And I want to thank you very much for your time and uh, greatly encourage you to support adapting these codes without amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have um, Marianne Lazarus. and I'm a resident of St. Louis 4388 McPherson uh, in the Central West End. I'm actually speaking in support of both bills. I'm an architect. I uh, lived in St. Louis for the last 42 years and working um, both locally and nationally on high performance and energy efficient design. I was until very recently the firm-wide sustainability director at HOK working globally on energy efficiency issues. I'm currently chair of the local chapter of the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri Gateway. So uh, very dedicated to my city. And I endorsed uh, highly the building department's recommendations for adoption of the 2018 codes uh, without any weekly amendments. As my fellow architects spoke at the hearing a couple weeks ago, Helen De uh, Kessler DeFate, who's been very active in codes for decades, she talked about the process of creating the codes, of drafting the codes, and it is a very open transparent and consensus-based process with all parties at the table. The, uh, the requirements that are outlined in the 2018 code are very reasonable and achievable and important for our city to adopt. It will, as Richard just spoke, the uh, result will be healthier buildings, buildings with reduced energy costs, which will especially make a difference for our low-income citizens. It's also a code that um, adopted without changes defines our city as one that is looking forward and will attract uh, both citizens and investors who are looking for a city like St. Louis that is thinking about the future. Um, as the St. Louis Climate Action Plan has shown, buildings make up the majority of the emissions in our urban area. So the adoption of this code will over time contribute to the city's energy and emissions reduction targets. So I strongly endorse adopting both bills without any amendments. That completes the list of those who've signed up for Board Bill 53. Um, some of those individuals did sign for the other bills, but they spoke already. So now we'll go to Board Bill 54, uh, James Trout. Thank you. I'm James Trout, 3956 Wenslick in the city in the Lindenwood neighborhood. Um, I'm here to support the adoption of a clean IECC for the city of St. Louis. Uh, you know, I am a um, spent 35 years as a builder and rehabber. I was a former uh, trustee on the city, HBA, former board member with the uh, State Realtors Association, and uh, I'm also a building performance uh, analyst. So I come to this from a, wearing a variety of hats. Um, you know,
know, this is, th this ICC code is a product of compromise. It really took a long time getting here uh, because a lot of builders, a lot of engineers, a lot of designers had input on it. And the best of their ideas came to the surface to produce something that would uh, both make housing more sustainable, more energy efficient, certainly much healthier, uh, but also have the a re not have an unreasonable economic impact on the communities uh, that deployed it. Um, so in St. Louis, we have three choices. Um, we can pay for this, uh, pay for both the energy savings, the code, the health and safety benefits by embedding them at the lowest entry cost, which is when houses are built. Uh, it can be when we pay for them at a much higher expense later on in terms of a retrofit, uh, where the cost is substantially higher, or we can do nothing and simply risk building homes that continue to be less sustainable, less healthy, and less safe uh, for the occupants, certainly less energy efficient. Uh, many people are not aware uh, of the damage done to buildings and people by outdated codes and practices. Sick building syndrome is caused by living in tight, poorly ventilated homes with high chemical-based building materials. This is something we've only learned recently. It really has, after studying hundreds of homes over 12 to 15 years, uh, we've discovered that we have been polluting the indoor air in our homes. Uh, this includes homes built in the last 30 years, chiefly. It also includes all the homes that have been retrofitted over the last few years. Research now shows that the mixing of those building material chemicals can contribute to endocrine disruption, autoimmune disorder, allergies, cancer, autism, and possibly Alzheimer's on a scale no one saw coming. Uh, EPA estimates it affects, on a toxic level, roughly 40, excuse me, 30 million homes. Childhood asthma, as an example, has skyrocketed in recent years as those chemicals are increased in homes and St. Louis continues to be a leader in rising childhood asthma rates, costing us millions, even as we try to roll back remedies within the new energy codes. Indoor air quality is now among the EPA's top five health risks, and these new codes help solve that problem. The cost for this new code adds about $50 per mortgage payment for a typical home, and that consumer uptick is more than paid for just with the energy savings. So it's break even or better. The six or $7,000 additional cost to the builder, which is passed on to the buyers, is actually only a few hundred dollars in terms of additional carry cost. Builder usually doesn't pay cash for these, for building a home. And it's just for the period of the time between the building of the home and the sale of the home. Granted, some builders may oppose this, but more builders will adopt it to better differentiate themselves in the marketplace. St. Louis ended up being the only city that adopted this in the state of Missouri. You'd have a lot of builders coming to St. Louis to build these homes to set themselves apart. The new 2015 IECC Energy Code helps solve a number of indoor environmental issues by requiring ventilation and pressurization testing before occupancy. This is something that really won the hearts and minds of the folks at the, um, at the delegates at the IECC. The two to $300 cost is more than offset, for, cost for that testing, by the way, is more than offset by energy savings, so it's a win-win. The energy savings alone uh, is about $7,500 over the life of the energy measures, and the health benefits have been tracked at four times that amount. It makes sense to make a safe product at the beginning to save us all energy and health dollars downstream every year, all those houses. It means houses will last longer, people will last longer, and dollars will last longer if we do the right thing and adopt the full code without um, any compromising measures. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking uh, against Board Bill 54, uh, I believe it's Celeste Reuter. My name is Celeste Reeder. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Home Builders Association of St. Louis and Eastern Missouri. 
and I uh, want to thank you today for the opportunity to comment on Board Bill 54. Our association is comprised of about 640 St. Louis based companies who together employ over 40,000 people in our community. Uh, our St. Louis market is also unique in that it's one of only two in the entire country where residential construction is still predominantly union built. And so our members provide a lot of good paying jobs and we would like to provide more. But in order for that to happen, um, new construction needs to remain a viable option for a large percentage of our of our residents and our population here. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, our builders and contractors, they are businessmen and women who do this every single day. They know the cost of every stick and every brick that goes into a home and what it takes to construct a home according to the codes that are adopted in each jurisdiction where they build. They have to evaluate every project that they put together um, for the costs that go into it, as well as for what, what is the marketplace uh, for those homes, what are the sale prices, what do buyers want, and not, you know, they have to deal with the realities of the marketplace and the requirements in each place before they put a project together. They have to be able to present that project to banks or other people that are going to finance these projects and show that it's a viable project that will have a return for those financers. So one of the things that was mentioned a little bit earlier and I just wanted to address, it, it is true that the Habitat for Humanity homes are built you know, to this standard. But as you may know, I mean, there are a lot of supplies as well as labor, not all, that are, but a good portion are donated to build those homes. So it makes it a little bit different. It's not quite apples to apples as, when, as compared to when you're trying to put, um, you know, a market rate home out there. So this is the 2018 International Residential Code. It's kind of the how-to manual for putting a, a new home together. And um, there's a lot in here. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look, but this is what will be adopted through Board Bill 54. And you're being asked to adopt it uh, without amendments. I want to talk just about a little piece in Chapter 11. We have one amendment we'd like to propose to go along with several other amendments that are within Board Bill 54 already, um, with the goal of moving into a, a positive step still with energy efficiency. We're not saying no to energy efficiency. We want to build attractive, safe, energy efficient homes that are also affordable and that people want to buy. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, one amendment today I'm not going to talk about it. Actually, my colleagues are, but that's, that's really all that we're here about today. Um, so it'll move us in a positive direction in energy efficiency, but it'll also allow the marketplace to catch up to everything that's in this book. If you do everything that's in Chapter 11, okay, say you did everything that's in this book, the Missouri, um, or the Midwest Energy Efficiency Alliance says that, says that you'll save somewhere between $400 and $450 per year in your utility bills, and that sounds pretty good. Until you start looking at what it costs to construct the home to the standard. <clears throat> and we've had a couple of different evaluations of going from an amended code, which you have right now. You have, you're on the 2009 IRC with amendments, and then jumping to a code cycle several cycles ahead without amendments. The HBA's evaluation, which we did based on the 2015 code, very similar to this one, show that it will cost between 20 and 24,000 additional dollars to the consumer to make that leap. The other study was done by um, St. Louis County. They actually built 10 homes to different energy efficiency levels. And the one to the highest level was $26,000 more expensive than the amended code version. Again, they found it saved about $400 per year in utility bills. So if you look at that with today's mortgage rates, what's that mean for a buyer? If you add $20,000 to the price of the house and you have to add that to your mortgage, it's gonna cost you about $1,200 a year. Two minutes left. $1,200 per year uh, in your mortgage payments. Almost three times what you would save. If you did it as a simple payback, 
and I said, okay, I've spent an extra twenty thousand. I'm saving four hundred and fifty a year. That's fifty plus years it's going to take you to make that money back. So, I think the other thing we want to address is that homes that are currently being built to the 2009 code are not efficient. Um, in fact, a couple of years ago, the Missouri Division of Energy needed to um, perform a study of homes constructed within the state uh, in areas where there are building codes adopted. This was to comply with uh, funding that had been received through the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act. Okay? And they had to show that they were up to up to snuff, as it were, on energy efficiency as according to the 2009 code. The state of Missouri passed without a problem when these homes were evaluated. Um, so if you look at it, homes that are being built right now are more energy efficient than the current housing stock. And to say that they aren't is just not the case. Again, what we're gonna talk about, we still wanna take a positive step forward, but we need to make sure that the marketplace can bear what's being asked of it. Um, so anyway, we, we know there are city residents who would love to build new homes and stay in the city that they love. We have builders who would like to come in and make that happen. And so we would ask that you please not make that impossible for them. Thanks. All right, thank you. Speaking for the bill, uh, Emily Andrews. My name is Emily Andrews. I'm the executive director of the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri Gateway Chapter. I live at 5747 Gresham in the um, Princeton Heights neighborhood, um, and I've been a city resident my entire life. Um, in the U.S., residential and commercial buildings are responsible for 45% of our greenhouse gas emissions or our carbon emissions. In the city of St. Louis, this percentage is over 60%. As was mentioned earlier, in urban areas, buildings are responsible for the majority of our energy use and therefore our greenhouse gas emissions. For many of this might seem depressing or overwhelming, but to me, this represents an opportunity for us to do better. And updated building codes will help us do that for our residents uh, and for everyone. Adopting the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and the whole suite of 2018 codes will help St. Louis improve public health, protect the environment, and save money. It will also support the many climate and environmental goals and efforts already in place in the city of St. Louis. I'm just gonna list a few of those to show you the leadership that's taking place here in our city. Um, the city has pledged to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 28% by 2025 and 80% by 2050. This is in alignment with the Paris Agreement and the We Are Still In initiative. There is also both a sustainability plan and a climate action plan in place to help us work towards these goals. In 2017, the Board of Aldermen unanimously passed a resolution sponsored by uh, Alderman Kotar to require large buildings to annually report their energy and water use to the building division in order to drive investment and energy efficiency in our buildings. And that's currently underway right now out of the building division. The city is also a leader in property assessed clean energy financing with the Set the Pace program. We were one of the first programs in the whole country, um, the Pace program here. And the controller's office complements PACE with their home energy loan program, the HELP program, which offers low interest loans for residential efficiency improvements. More recently, the Board of Aldermen passed Resolution 124, which is the Ready for 100 um, initiative. This commits the city to the transition to 100% clean energy by 2035. And I was reminded to let you know that you all voted in favor of this. Um, all of these initiatives add up and make the city a leader in our region and nationally when it comes to environmental protection, environmental justice, energy efficiency, and renewable energy. An updated building code is a critical piece of this leadership. And I applaud the building division and the Board of Aldermen for introducing the 2018 code suite with the energy efficiency measures intact. I encourage you to vote in favor of this full suite of codes, maintaining the requirements for energy efficiency strategies that will save residents and businesses money while protecting public health and the environment. Thank you. Thank you. And if you, you know, again, if anyone has any written comments, you can always give this to the clerk so it can go out to the committee members. Uh, speaking against the bills, uh, Emily Swartz Post. the 
same documents that uh, the Home Builders Association emailed everyone late last week as well. So just as a heads up. Should I wait? My name is Emily Schwartz Post, and I'm here today um, also to represent the Home Builders Association of St. Louis and Eastern Missouri. I live here in the city of St. Louis at 3311 Oxford Avenue in the Ellendale neighborhood. And um, just first, thanks for the opportunity to come up and address you today. Um, as Celeste mentioned, the Home Builders Association would like to formally present just one amendment to Board Bill 54, which is the, the bill to uh, adopt the 2018 International Residential Code. And um, of the, on the handout that we just handed out, if you would uh, so kindly flip to the second page, I can kind of walk you through our amendment. And again, this amendment is to the, um, the insulation and fenestration table, um, which uh, addresses how much insulation you would you know, put in new <coughs> homes being constructed in the city. So if you would look at that table and then please move down to the row for climate zone four, um, that's the climate zone that we're in here in the city of St. Louis. And if you um, begin to kind of walk or move across the row from the left-hand side of the page, I'll walk you through our proposed changes. Um, the first proposed change is for the fenestration U-factor. Uh, windows U-factor measures the rate of heat transfer and tells you how well a window insulates. So you'll see there that the HBA is proposing a U-factor of 0 0.40. Um, rather than the 2018 IRC requirement of 0 0.32. With a U factor of 0 0.40, the city would be requiring the installation of low E windows. Um, and we think that that would be great. They're very proven to be energy efficient. And um, we feel that because they reflect, absorb, and emit <coughs> radiant energy while still minimizing the amount of ultraviolet and infrared light that passes through the glass, we think that would be great for residents here in the city who are, are buying new homes. Um, if you move to a U factor of 0 0.32, which is what the code requires, um, you would be requiring the installation of argon gas filled windows. Um, but if you look at any manufacturer's website, they will tell you that the argon gas eventually will dissipate from those windows over time. So really, installing low E windows with the 0.40 uh, U factor is really more bang for a buyer's buck, so to speak, because they'll be uh, proved to be more energy efficient in the long run. And actually, um, upfront costs to um, install an argon gas filled window over a low E window would be about 800 to $900 per home. And so um, any buyer could choose to, to install a, a argon gas fill window if they wanted. We're saying let's make the code minimum a, uh, a low E window. So the second change proposed that you'll see there is for a glazed fenestration SHGC. Um, this this is stands for solar heat gain coefficient and it indicates how much solar heating is absorbed through a window. Um, and you'll see there that the, the IRC attempts to require a U factor of 0 0.40, um, but in our climate zone, we feel that if you, we feel you could very safely and adequately give that a no rating. Um, because here in St. Louis, our heating degree days outnumber our cooling degree days, the sun is actually our friend. Um, so we feel requiring any type of a U factor is probably just unnecessary and we would respectfully ask you consider changing that to a no rating. Um, third, we're recommending a ceiling R value of R38. Um, this is actually an increase. The, current, the city's current requirement is R30, and um, we w feel that moving to an R38 is a very incremental and measured step forward. The 2018 IRC um, actually would like to prescribe an R value of R49 in the ceiling. Um, if you install R49 insulation, it actually uh, changes the, the way you construct, um, construct your home because it requires the use of a raised heel truss. So a raised heel truss is just like a normal truss, but it has um, kind of a, a heel that extends all the way around the, the outside of the truss, and that is to accommodate the additional depth of insulation. Um, when you install a raised heel truss, you're actually increasing the cost of a home by $1,800 to $2,000. Um, 
the truss itself and the insulation is not really even the bulk of that cost but when you consider that you're making your home a nominal foot taller on all sides you have to think about all of the the product that goes into that your brick your siding your vapor barrier your wall insulation um, and then of course the additional labor that's required and that's where that cost comes from so again the city's on r30 right now we think moving to an r38 is a great step in the right direction um, rather than move all the way to the R49. Let's give the market some time to catch up. Um, the next change you'll see there is for wood frame R value. We're recommending the city maintain wall insulation at an R value of R13. Um, the 2018 IRC uh, prescribes an R20 for wall insulation, but that actually equates to two by six wall construction rather than the, the norm for two by four. And it's interesting, whenever I was sitting down and trying to put together some notes for today, I, I was almost struggling to write some notes for this because if you move to R20 in the walls and two by six wall construction, you will be the only place in the, in the St. Louis region that is doing that. I never have to talk about R20 in the walls. Um, two by six wall construction is a, a very large departure from um, what the, the, the market across the region is doing. R13, um, everyone, feels that that is very adequate wall insulation. If you move to an R20 and you move to two by six wall construction, you're actually going to be decreasing uh, a home's footprint. And we feel, especially in the city on our narrow city lots, um, you're, you're just going to look at even smaller homes with smaller footprints. Um, and the cost to move to two by six wall construction is actually $3,900 to $5,900 per home. That's, that's a big cost. You have about two minutes. Okay, and I have one more, um, one more change to talk about, and that final one is um, uh, basement wall insulation. The 2018 IRC proposes a basement wall R value, which would necessitate the use of basement blankets. Basement blankets um, is when you unroll your insulation and actually attach it with a nail to the, the concrete um, foundation in your home. Um, most jurisdictions in St. Louis do not require basement blankets, and some that required them previously actually removed them when they adopted the code most recently because there are a lot of concerns with basement blankets. Um, specifically moisture issues because your concrete foundation is going to have exposure to groundwater. That's a given at some point. And, um, and then when you think about the additional condensation from interior air, you're really dealing with a lot of moisture issues there. And that can lead to mold growth. And I'm so glad that somebody over here mentioned sick building syndrome because that's something that our members take very seriously. And when you build your homes too tightly or you have too much insulation, that's exactly what results, sick building syndrome. Um, so what our amendment says there is that we're proposing no basement blankets um, if you have less than 20% of your total um, concrete wall area exposed, either at the back wall, but that's usually framed and insulated anyway, or above your grade. So um, that, is, that is kind of our amendment in a nutshell, and I would be happy to try to answer any questions. If you have real technical questions, we have some builders in the room who um, could answer those as well. Um, but yeah, thank you very so, much. Thank you. I think what we'll do in terms of questions is to uh, get through our, mm -hmm. through the entire list, and then if committee members have questions of specific people who've testified, we can come back to that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Speaking for the bill, I believe it's Gary Steps. Thank you for letting me speak this morning. I uh, brought some handouts. I'm sorry for bringing up. I can make sure you get more. So, Gary Steps, I live at 427 South Park in Webster Groves, but I have many clients here in the city. So, um, I am the founder and chief scientist of Butterfly Energy Works. I have a whole bunch of uh, um, alphabet suit behind <coughs> my name, both as, as a true scientist, as a physicist and engineer, but also in the building space. So I'm a passive house consultant. I'm a net energy scientist. Da, da, da. Um, and the reason I'm here 
is that a major part of our mission is education, specifically safety and energy education. Um, and I like to say that I am strongly in favor of new codes unamended. Um, where I come from, our main mission is in fact, as a scientist, research, design, and building of super buildings. And to that point, you are the proud owners of the first net zero plus building in the, state, in the city of St. Louis, actually in the St. Louis area. Um, there's a picture of it on the front there. It's in Dogtown. And they have given back over a megawatt of power to Ameren since Ameren got the, the rule change so they didn't have to pay residential energy bills. And if you take a good look at that, you won't be able to find the solar panels. It's a very small array and it's hidden from the street. Um, so I'd just like to kind of counter what we've heard in the last couple of minutes. Again, I'm a building scientist and have been a member of Passive House which is now the demand certification for the entire of the Europe. And pass, you can figure Passive House is net zero ready, add some renewables and you're done. <coughs> um, so line, line item one, the number we keep hearing of $26,000 is a made up number. And if you go to the National Association of Home Builders, their number is 8,000. And see, you'll see that in a minute. We've done a lot of different things here, including green builders. And all those numbers come back in the range of $3,500. Um, so we are not yet in a space where days, but just a line item. Um, R13 is almost never achieved in current buildings. Again, I come in and inspect buildings at regular intervals, and as applied, you're probably at R11 or less. Sloppy building. Um, specifically, sick building syndrome only exists when you have poor air circulation and poor air control point to going forward is to build a building that is so tight that, tight, that house is tighter than a bank vault, and use mechanical ventilation to control the airflow. Their indoor air quality is spectacular. It's about what you see in a, an operating room in a hospital. And as I noted there, they have net negative electrical bills every month of the year except January and February when the sun's not up very much. Also in there, there's a spec sheet in there for that building. Also in there is a spec sheet for what we call the lake house. We build a completely off-grid home down in the Ozarks, again, with a very small PV array. You can actually see it on the roof of that building. But if it were attached to the grid, it would be net zero plus because they would feed power to the, to the grid. Since they aren't, their sh solar panels shut down almost every day because they don't have any place to put the power. All the batteries are full. So the last thing I want to do is if you look at page one, this is an analysis that was done pre and post. And what I did was I went to a green mortgage company here in St. Louis who wants to do this, by the way, and we said, okay, so let's pick a big number. The NAHB number is the largest legitimate number we see, which is $8,000. All the local folks here have come in about 3,500. We'll add $8,000 to the cost of the house. You have two more minutes. What? You have two more minutes. Thank you. So if you just walk through that, the point is you add $8,000. You go down, you go down, go down, the house payment is identical because because this is a certified energy efficient home, the loaner has less risk in the business 
if the house goes under for foreclosure, they, they have a building that's not going to cost them as much to maintain. Um, down payment, insurance, to, to, to go to the bottom line, total cash to close is basically identical. The mortgage payments are identical, and they're saving whatever it was, 400 and some dollars a year in utility bills. So that comes back, as one person mentioned, to somewhere between five and seven years total payback for all that efficiency you've got, and you're going to be in the house your whole life. These houses are tougher. They have far less maintenance. Obviously, they're healthier. And the, uh, so I'd like to just go back to finalize and say that we, as Butterfly, design and build buildings that are far beyond this. Net return on that building for everything we did to make it net positive was about a seven year payback. So those people are in there five years and they're just about to get all their money back. And the last thing I'd like to say is with no more money up front, you have a far better home that you're gonna live in comfortably and safely for the rest of your life. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Speaking against the bill, Jane Decker. Good morning, uh, Jane Duker and 1100 Town and Country Commons. Um, I represent the home builders, and I just wanted to give a little context to some of this. One, um, of this entire code, um, we are only seeking an amendment, as she mentioned, of something very small. So we, we, are, we are on board with moving to where you want to be. Um, we've just picked out the most egregious ones that we think, one, for the reasons that were stated, um, um, are not appropriate at this time. That's not to say never, but sometimes you move too far too fast. The last witness talked a lot about the $8,000 number that was given by the National Home Builders Association. The problem with that is that's when you move from cycle to cycle. We are moving from 2009 amend amended, contemplating 2018. That's not one cycle move. That's many cycles a move. And so, you know, so of all of those costs, the 26000 that was referred to, we're really only focused on the insulation ones, the window and the insulation ones that we told you about because we really believe that those um, are, are inappropriate for the reasons she stated. Um, also, the code that's presented to you in the bills, and we're only talking about Bill 54, so we're not here on any of the other ones, um, that has already been amended. The idea that the 2018 is, is getting presented to you unamended is not true. It, it, it has been amended before it was pr presented in that bill. So you're not under any circumstances picking up and passing 2018 unamended. That's not happening. So even if you picked up and passed up what the city has presented. So I want to be clear that, that we're already amending this bill. So it, it's not crazy that we're talking about the minor amendments that, that we're talking about. And, and also I want to give you context that <clears throat> Obviously, the goal is energy efficiency, and everybody wants to move toward that and the environmental benefits of that. Um, the new home construction in the city of St. Louis is a tiny, tiny piece of the market. However, as this code has been amended, you're exempting um, basically full gut rehabs, which are basically new construction. Those exemptions, which I, I think I'm sure are appropriate for all kinds of reasons, um, we think it's difficult to place all of the energy efficient requirements on such a small piece of the market. So that, that's something that, so we have tried to be very, very circumspect in the amendments that we're proposing because we are not looking to prevent this. Um, but what we are seeking is to say there are some things that are too far too fast. You can't go to two by six. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at those homes like on the hill, those shotgun homes. I mean, you're taking away a lot of living space. There will be a day when insulation will be thin enough that you can commercially go up to that higher number and still stick by your two by fours. We're not there yet. And so to require that I think is not something that homeowners want. With all due respect to the, to the, to the scientists, last year the Home Builders Association built 4,600 homes. In the heyday they were building 8,000 homes a year. They know what this stuff costs. There's theoretical costs and there's real costs. We have the, the geospatial area that's all vacant land 
there's going to be a day when you're going to want new homes there, middle class homes that people can afford and can come to the city and have incredibly energy efficient homes compared to the housing stock that you have now. And we don't want to discourage that by going too far too fast. So, um, so I just want to make sure that you had the context of what a small piece of what we're asking for compared to everything that's in here. So thank you. Thank you. Speaking for the bill is Michael Zuber. Michael. Oh. Hello, uh, my name's Michael Berg. I live at uh, 1459 Greg Avenue in Dogtown, uh, actually next door to the first passive house that uh, Gary Steps was referring to, which is owned by uh, my brother Dan Berg. And I, uh, I'm with the Sierra Club and just wanted to reiterate our stance that uh, we support the adoption of these bills without uh, any, any of the uh, HBA proposed amendments. It would be great for the city, great for indoor air quality, and great for um, uh, reducing utility bills and uh, reducing utility costs. And I want to submit for the record, uh, in the last day, 44 of our members and supporters have written to their older people in support of the bills as written. Uh, we have over 800 members uh, in the city of St. Louis. Thank you. All right, thank you. You have. Speaking against the bill, uh, unfortunately, I can't make out the first name, but it's Fingernut. Fingernut. Okay. My name is Phil Fingerhut, uh, lifetime resident of St. Louis, 3546A Magnolia. Um, I just wanted to ask and encourage that the, the, the uh, committee consider the amendments the HBA has, uh, has suggested and uh, that these, the code is a, is a minimum and if home buyers would like to have the additional things that are energy efficiency or indoor air quality items that they might want, they can they can always be built that way. So that's kind of all I wanted to say. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Speaking for the bill is I believe it's Gretchen Waddell. Good morning or afternoon, whatever it is now. <laughs> it's afternoon. <laughs> My name is Gretchen Waddell Barwick. Uh, I live at 1400 McCausland Avenue in Grants Park neighborhood. Um, and I'm with the Missouri Sierra Club. I brought some handouts for the committee. Um, and I'm here to speak in favor of Board Bill 54. So there's been a lot of information today and some sort of scary terms thrown around. Um, and one thing I want to make sure that the board is clear on is that the 2018 uh, I codes are a compromise. And it's taken years for professionals in the industry to come up with these building codes. Um, and one of the compromises in this code is that there are multiple performance paths to get to the energy efficiency goals that are set. Um, and one of those perform performance paths allows you to move away from two by six construction if you want to. So we can have energy efficient homes in St. Louis City without losing any of our footprint and any of our space. So I just wanna point out that that's very important. Um, I also don't have it on me right now, but I will send um, some uh, studies that have been done about the cost effectiveness of this bill. Um, and uh, the HBA is absolutely correct. We have a heavily amended code right now in St. Louis City, and we are taking a substantial step with this code, the way that it's written by the building division that has been introduced by Alderman Kennedy. It is a um, excellent step forward. 
the average new homeowner would save $580 per year on utility bills alone. So that's a 27% energy efficiency increase in new homes. It's incredibly important that we take this step because St. Louis City is growing. I know in my neighborhood alone, I am seeing cost of homes go up, I'm seeing homes move quickly, I'm seeing new homes being built and rehabbed, and I know that that's happening throughout the entire city. And when people build those new homes and when developers come in because people want to live in St. Louis City, we want to make sure that we have energy efficient and well-built homes for them to move into. So that means that we don't want to see poor fenestration units for our windows. Why would we have a code that allows windows that have been stockpiled in someone's basement or utility system that you can't even buy at Home Depot right now? The market has moved beyond. Our code needs to reflect that. And the citizens that live here deserve better homes. So I'm here in favor of Board Bill 54. Um, and uh, thank you for your time today and your consideration on this. Thank you. Uh, we have no others uh, that have signed up to speak against the bill. So now we have uh, Ed Smith speaking for. Hello, my name is Ed Smith. I'm the policy director at Missouri Coalition for the Environment. Our office is located at 3115 South Grand Boulevard, Suite 650, right across from the beautiful Tower Grove Park. Um, just wanted to go on the record in, in support of the, the code that was introduced and um, just respond to a few things. So, um, you know, first off, I've, I've long time have not been a, a, a big fan of Ameren, Missouri. Uh, for various reasons, uh, but recently they have committed to the largest energy efficiency offering in the state's history um, and announced plans to build a, the largest wind farm in the state of Missouri. Uh, the, the utility that services this region is taking a focus on uh, decreasing their carbon footprint in a very serious way. Uh, the, the, uh, the building codes that have been introduced are a part of what we call silver buckshot and trying to address the climate problem that we all know is real. That's why the, the city has taken the measures uh, detailed before me to address climate and energy and carbon emissions. Uh, and I would just like to, to touch on one of the things that was stated by the Home Builders Association representatives that the $8,000 figure from the national HBA is for the last jump from the efficiency standards to this latest one. The reason that we have not seen a regional increase in adopting the latest efficiency standards is because of the Home Builders Association. It is the product of their intervention in weakening efficiency codes in St. Louis County and for the last several years and now here in the city that have led to these increased costs. Uh, so so to, to complain about the costs at the same time as being responsible for those costs, I don't think that that's uh, a really good argument to uh, support their weakening amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking also for the bill is Jessica Levis Dunn. Jessica Dean. I'm Dean, an architect. Pardon me. Um, pardon <laughs> address 3407 uh, South Jefferson. Um, I just wanted to say that I understand the original version of this board bill m uh, upheld the insulation requirements of the 2018 code, but significantly reduced or omitted air sealing requirements. I've been told that this has been revised. I've yet to see that revision, mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to emphasize that air sealing is just as important as insulation, and without proper air sealing, insulation becomes ineffective, and we introduce risks for moisture infiltration. Uh, which then leads to mold, rot, poor indoor air quality, and a generally unhealthy interior environment. Um, in a mixed humid climate like St. Louis, mold prevention and air sealing is especially critical. And it's not enough to just encourage best, pra best practices. We must set a measurable standard and require air leakage testing per the 2018 um, IRC Chapter 11. Um, to give you an example of the current status quo here in St. Louis, a few years ago I worked with a homeowner who called with complaints that her 10-year-old home in Lafayette Square was drafty. It was cold in the winter, hot in the summer, and therefore expensive to heat and cool. At the time, this client was living on a limited budget, 
while forced to take months off of work while recovering from a major back surgery. My client thought she needed new windows on an essentially new home, but the real problem was that the home lacked proper air sealing and around its otherwise perfectly good windows. This home was built to the stringent aesthetic standards of the Lafayette Historic District while completely ignoring energy efficiency codes and best practices. Requiring air sealing testing through the 2018 IRC would prevent negligence from this happening, would prevent negligence like this from happening in the future, ensure that new homeowners on a fixed income will not be facing unanticipated maintenance expenses soon after moving in. Uh, also, in response to the comments that we would be the only municipality in the region requiring two by six construction, this is just simply false. Any municipality that has adopted either 2012 or 2015 IRC would also require 29 or R19 insulation on a wood framed wall and therefore two by six walls when using standard fiberglass cavity insulation. The entire state of Illinois uh, builds to the 2015 codes um, and they're working towards adoption of 2018 codes. The city of Clayton has adopted 2015 codes, Richmond Heights 2012 and so on. Um, furthermore, it is my personal experience that two by four construction on homes has long since been abandoned in the city of St. Louis. I have yet to see that done in the last few years and <laughs> at least in the inner, inner city in the historic neighborhoods. Um, so I commend the city on taking steps uh, towards remaining competitive uh, with our neighbors and I fully support the adoption of, of the 2018 IRC unamended. Thank you. Thank you. Um, speaking for is Bruce Morrison. Good afternoon, members of the committee. Bruce Morrison, my office address is 319 North 4th Street. St. Louis. I am general counsel with Great Rivers Environmental Law Center at that address and I also serve as chair of the Environmental Justice Committee for the Missouri State Conference of the NAACP. I'm, I'm here in a support role today for the St. Louis City branch of the NAACP. Collectively we support the adoption of the energy efficiency measures without amendment. The Missouri State Conference of the NAACP, the St. Louis City branch, and all branches of the NAACP support National's position on energy efficiency measures, which is set out in its 2017 Model Energy Policies Guide, and it's this. It's given our current dependence on harmful energy production practices, we should reduce our demand for energy to the greatest extent possible and do this by promoting high efficiency building practices. Among the reasons for doing so, the health impacts. African American children are twice as likely as white American children to die from asthma as a result of our energy production practices. We need to, we need to consume less energy. African American children are three times more likely to be admitted to the hospital for an asthma attack and African American adults are more likely to die of lung disease than white adults even though they are less likely to smoke. There are the economic impacts as well. Low income households of color, multifamily and renting households spend a much larger percentage of their income on energy bills than the average family. African American households experience a median energy burden 64% greater than white households. We need these energy efficiency measures. Latino households, a median burden, 24% greater than white households. We need these measures in the city. We ask that you adopt the bill without amendment and both the St. Louis City Branch and the Missouri State Conference of the NAACP will follow up with full written comments. Thank you for your, your working on this. Thank you. Uh, I believe I was in error. I don't think I called Speaking against Alex, did I call? Okay, thank you. And that completes uh, all of those who had signed up to speak on Board Bill 54. We only have two to speak on Board Bill 55 and that would complete the agenda. Um, speaking against it is Ray Daniels. No, no. Okay, go right ahead. It's fine. Um, 
we uh, respectfully were asking for a, um, an amendment of uh, chapter four of the proposal to adopt the uh, 2018 IFC. We have since spoken, I have since spoken with the uh, members of the uh, building division to discuss uh, our concerns. Um, one of the major thrusts of the Homeland Security Act was that was that of uh, emergency preparation. And since 911, we spend a considerable amount of time um, addressing it. You know, one of the, the big things was the National Incident Management System, whereby the emergency response capabilities of the various <coughs> facilities around town uh, were, were married up with the emergency response uh, capabilities of first responders, fire department, uh, police department, and what have you. And um, so we've spent a considerable amount of time putting those command systems in place. We have fire department, uh, police department, and um, facilities individuals who are there. So you have essentially a command system in place in case of a cat catastrophe. And if it grows, you have the bones of a good uh, command system in place uh, that gives you a better chance of having a successful response and emergency response. Um, and in chapter four, it appeared that um, there was some language in there that was going to um, assign those duties to um, inspectors, uh, civilian inspectors, and those were our concerns. And so um, at this point, like I said, we've spoken with the uh, members of the building division, with the commissioner there, and uh, you know we're gonna be uh, working with them as far as um, making some amendments, and of course, it'll be coming back to you guys. So. Uh, hopefully our back and forth won't be as long as 54. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, speaking against Board Bill 55 is uh, Demetrius Alford. Take my time. I was going to say good morning, but good afternoon, and good thank afternoon. you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Demetrius Alford, also known as Al, president of Local 73 Firefighters Union, the city of St. Louis. And just like Captain Daniel said, uh, there's been a lot of conversation on board bill 55 with the building division and we believe we have uh, some language that we're going to introduce as far as an amendment so uh, in, in the form that it's in now we were going to speak against but in the spirit of uh, negotiations uh, we'd like to be prepared for the next round and talk to the building division and come up with some language that will be uh, acceptable to both parties okay. thank you very much All right, thank you uh, that completes the list of everyone who is signed up to speak today uh, we certainly appreciate all of the comments and the written uh, statements that were also made. It was very good information. Were there any questions from members of the committee of anyone that's testified so far? <laughs> all the women? Mm -hmm. You remember who it was? I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had uh, some questions for the Home Builders Association. Any anyone, I guess, would be fine. Well, I suppose. The first question pertains to the, um, the figure that Celeste brought to our attention, the $26,000 estimate that the new codes would cost in construction. And I was curious if you could tell us uh, that $26,000 figure, what uh, average home price is that figure based upon? It's not based on an average home price. This was uh, based on the 26000 now, let's to be clear. That came from the study that was done by the St. Louis County uh, Office of Economic Development. Um, community development, I'm sorry, and, and at the time Laclede Gas, now Spire. That was a study that they did uh, back in 2011. Our numbers at the HBA are based on a 2,400 square foot home, and they're based on actual bids for each um, provision within the new code that would change from the current 2009 amended code. There were approximately 22 items in that list, we have a spreadsheet that we can make available to you that itemizes each each change and adds up to um, about twenty thousand dollars for a twenty four hundred square foot ranch and twenty four thousand for a twenty four hundred square foot two story. Um, these are bids that were done by actual contractors that do this every day, and that's where our number came from. And that twenty four hundred square foot home, um, these twenty four, you know, where are these being built? Uh, are they being built in the city um, or uh, th this is a typical size home that we are seeing being built um, in areas that 
you know, where our members are building. Now, I, can I say specifically that's the average size home that will be built in the city? No, I cannot say that. Um, we would have to try to extrapolate to what would be average in the city, but we had to pick a size so that we could have um, some, uh, compare apples to apples when we're talking about, you know, different, different pieces of the code. And speaking of your members and where they're building, where are they typically building in the St. Louis region? Well, we build all over the St. Louis region. The HBA tracks permits in uh, seven counties, including the city of St. Louis. Uh, about half of our permits are being pulled in St. Charles County right now. Um, approximately a quarter would be St. Louis and Jefferson counties. It is true that there are not a huge number of permits being pulled for new single family construction in the city of St. Louis right now. That's unfortunate. We would like to see that increase. Um, can you uh, provide us before our next hearing an est a, a, you mentioned that you track the building permits that you're pulling. Just w how many permits you're pulling in the city of St. Louis versus the surrounding area? And Absolutely do if that. the Home Builders Association isn't currently building in the city of St. Louis in a considerable amount, I think you've already mentioned half and another quarter being outside of the city. Um, it's not because of our current building codes. That's true. There, there is a combination of factors. One is uh, the market and what people are able to afford. I guess our point would be, why make it harder? It's already, what you say is true. It's already difficult to build a market rate home on the code you have, Some, a, a home that many people can afford. Making the code more stringent is only going to make it more difficult. And we, would, we are hoping to see um, as Jane mentioned, there's a lot of, there are a lot of vacant lots that we would love to see built on again. Does St. Charles have the 2000 and what codes is St. Charles using? Do you happen to know that off the top of your head? So one of the things we neglected to mention earlier, 2015 were, code. So, so 2015, many jurisdictions have gone to the 2015. Uh, and, we have and a list have, of, have, have they those? amended their environmental components? Yes. We can provide you spreadsheets of those as well. Well, my point just being that it's not our building code. We have some of the oldest building codes in the region, 2009, we're aligned with St. Louis County, but um, the, it's not our building codes that's preventing the Home Builders Association or your members from building in the city of St. Louis, at least in my understanding. Um, the $26,000, I mean, we're not building 2,400 square foot homes in the city of St. Louis. And to come with figures that don't apply to the city of St. Louis, I think really undermines your argument here. Most of the single family homes that we're seeing built in the city of St. Louis are much smaller, total value of closer to $150,000 total. And if the Home Builders Association has, is taking issue with insulation and window upgrades, those are primarily the things that you outlined for us here today. Those upgrades could not possibly total $26,000 worth of a $150,000 home. And so when you talk about apples to apples, I think we ought to come exactly with that, apples to apples. And if you want to bring figures that are more specific to the city of St. Louis, I think it would be more appropriate for this body to hear. We, we were very specific when we said that the $26,000 meant the whole code, but that we tried to whittle down to the very minimum the amendments we were requesting, which was only to the insulation and the windows. We did not indicate that that was the cost of that amendment. We indicated that that was all of the amendments. Sure, so. but again, that was done by a study in St. Louis County. Their building looks very different than the construction that is occurring within the city of St. Louis. And so what I'd like to take a look at is what's actually going on in the city of St. Louis to compare apples to apples. Right now, um, you know, energy costs are increasing they are continuing to increase. Our state legislature just passed a bill that will raise electric rates by almost 10% for residents across the state. These numbers are only going to increase. And I think if we're going to compare the amount of money that it costs to improve the home, to make them more efficient, it should really be a comparison of what's actually happening within the city of St. Louis. So the numbers we gave you from the HBA are based on a 2,400 square foot home. The study that was done in St. Louis County in 2011 um, called Patrician Place 
these homes were 1,400 square feet, and that's probably closer to what you're talking about in the city. Uh, that's where the 26,000, th these are homes that were actually built. So we're not making these up. Um, so if, if, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, the only other questions I have really, um, I guess, would be about what other jurisdictions have um, adopted. It's my understanding that our entire neighboring state of Illinois has adopted these codes completely unamended for the entirety of their state. And, um, you know, as we look at, uh, as, as we look at making changes to our codes, we ought to keep in mind what our neighbors are doing. Do you mind if I make a comment on Illinois? Yeah, you, you quickly? can respond. Just on Illinois. Um, sure. So what you say is true. They have adopted the statewide energy code. Um, I would encourage you to look at what's going on over there with building permits. Um, it's, it's often stated that all of our Missouri builders are over there building houses to that code. Not true. Uh, they, we did have many of our members building in Illinois prior to the downturn. Since that, um, okay, we have about 150 builders in our association. I know of three that are building in Illinois right now. Most are just trying to close out what they've got and get out because it's not viable anymore. Alderman Vaccaro, you have a question? Actually, for the commissioner. Thank you, Lowell. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, because I, I keep hearing from everybody, but a couple of quick things. Has anybody in the state of Missouri gone to these codes yet? Well, remember, the state of Missouri doesn't have a building code. We're Anybody the, that does have a yeah, building we're code? Yeah, we're few states that doesn't. Uh, I don't believe. Yeah, I believe there is. Like, not on the 18th. I just was curious. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's primarily all the 15. I thought one of the municipals. They're, they're all exploring it, all of them. Uh, right. So they're, they're, they're not there yet. We're not there yet. The comment made earlier. So if you're so on, a, on, a, on a gut rehab of a brick building, which we've got many of them, they will have to increase the insulation. But if it's a full gut. Can you walk, I'm oh, sorry. So, so I talk so loud sometimes. I that's okay. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, under uh, gut rehabs of the older brick homes, they will have to increase their insulation factor to be more energy efficient. So that's you're going to find that provision in the existing building code, the IE navigate you back to the IRC, and I know this is, sounds strange, and the IECC. Um, all, all these codes blend one way or another, and, and that's what occurs on that. They all build upon one another. Yeah, there there is. And I, so I know someone made a comment earlier about the older rehabs, and, and so uh, I just wanted to correct that. Okay, and so far, just so because somebody came to me already and said, well, you're selling out, and I'm not. I'm keeping an open mind. I, sure. And I'm trying to listen to both sides, and I haven't decided. Um, because, I mean, there's some stuff in there that, that does, you know, kind of make me ask questions, and I'll talk to you in private later about them, but um, I have not made my mind up. So both sides understand. I am open and listening to what everybody has to say, whether it's the cost effect of the new house, the energy, building the cost of building in the city versus building something in the county, or are we gonna slow that down if we start to, I, there's a lot that's going through my mind, so I have not it's, it's a made a decision. It really right. So anyway, I just wanted to, I'm just curious. Alderman Spencer, you had another question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I have more of a comment. Uh, I do appreciate the Home Builders Association coming before us today with some thoughts and uh, potential amendments that they'd like to see. But I'd like to point out that the work that the Home Builders Association and their members are doing in St. Charles, building hundreds of new homes every single year, is part of what is plaguing the city of St. Louis, quite frankly. Um, you know, the region has been experiencing a very stagnant population growth for many, many decades. 
Um, and every new home that is built in St. Charles or St. Louis County is another home that is vacant in the city of St. Louis. And if the Build Home Builders Association is interested in working with the city of St. Louis, I encourage you to partner with the city and figure out a way to build some of those new homes here within the city of St. Louis at considerable amounts, uh, rather than coming before us and asking us to amend what the rest of the city is looking to adopt um, and be a partner with the, um, with the uh, city of St. Louis again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That really completes our agenda today. Next. Tuesday. You had a response you wanted to? You have to come up to the microphone. <laughs> and Phil, tell me how long, Martin, how long has the Housing Development Working Group been meeting? 15 years? Yeah. So every other month, members of the City of St. Louis Division Board of the Home Builders Association sit down with the St. Louis Development Corporation. We sit down with Frank Oswald. We always invite someone from the mayor's office. Um, for many years, it was Barb Geisman, as an example. She, we, we actually met in the mayor's office, I would say, up until about five years ago. And um, let's see, we have MSD in the room. We have Spire in the room. We have Ameren in the room. We have Ameren in the room. We have, and then we have representatives like Cheryl Lovell from the St. Louis um, Housing Authority and others. And we sit down every other month and we talk about ways that we can spur new home building in this city. Because it is something, and I, I actually feel a little bit passionate about it too, because I live here in the city. I live in a house built in 1904 in the Ellendale neighborhood with a three-year-old and a one-year-old. We would love to see more going on in the city. And there are a lot of us working to improve new home construction in the city. And we have attempted to partner with the city for the last 15 years plus with the Housing Development Working Group. We sit down with Otis Williams and Laura Costello and Don Rowe, and we talk about ways that we can entice new home building in the city. We have a very active City of St. Louis Division Board of the HBA. Yes, there's a lot going on in St. Charles, but there are a lot of members of the HBA who would like to see more going on in the city. So. And Mr. Chairman, if we could have those numbers, sure. what those numbers look like, what the trends are looking like, and maybe if there were some additional thoughts as to what is actually holding up that development, because quite frankly, we don't see um, the new construction that the city uh, deserves and should have, and that we, the region uh, is moving out you know, further and further away, which is harming the overall density and uh, viability of our region. If it were up to me and others it, at the HBA, there would be a lot more new home construction in the city. It's more difficult, it's already more difficult to build new homes in the city because of the lot sizes and because of demolition <coughs> issues and because of environmental issues and aging infrastructure. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, we don't have big empty fields like we do in St. Charles County where everything is just brand new and put in new and nice and clean. Um, that's part of it, and that's part of the things that we talk about at the Housing Development Working Group. How can we improve some of these other factors that are making it more difficult to see new home construction come in? So. Right. I believe that completes all of the questioning. We thank everyone for coming out today. Your comments are meaningful and uh, are helping us to move along. Next Tuesday, the committee will meet uh, to consider the amendments and uh, make any changes and then pass out these bills. Then that following Thursday, we'll probably have another meeting on the rest of the bills related to the uh, building codes. Uh, with that, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.